well you better get ready Bow to the masters Break it down! Hey guys, Kyle back here on the NVO blog. Glad you could join us once again for our Game of the Week videos. Um, we are in week three and our two games of the week are Torrington Holy Cross and Ansonia Derby. Sh should be two really big, really important games, uh, both for division supremacy. The winners um, here will at least have a leg up uh, in the divisional hunt. Uh, both have some other teams involved. Um, but these will be two, probably the first two dominoes to fall, I would say, in these divisions. Uh, we'll start off down uh, at DiFilippo Field, uh, down in Derby. Um, it is Ansonia, 2-0, coming in and facing the Raiders, who are 1-1. It's a Friday night, 7 o'clock game. Um, after the way Ansonia has looked in its first two games, it's going to be tough for the Raiders, although... Um, if it is one sort of type of team that can beat Ansoni, it might be Derby, which can you know, spread it open. Um, last year we saw the same thing. Derby comes out, hops on Ansoni, gets a lead with its passing game, and uh, stayed in it all the way into the end before Montreal Dobbs decided that uh, he wasn't going to let the Chargers lose. But uh, this time around, um, you know, we'll see how this sort of thing works out. Tom Brockett acknowledged after the Woodland game that this is a different sort of challenge for the uh, the Chargers. They haven't faced a passing team yet, and Derby certainly fits that bill. Um, so key players in this one, Arkell Newsom. I mean, what else can you say about him? He's going to get his yardage. You really don't figure on stopping Newsom. Um, it's really trying to limit the big plays, and it's trying to keep him off the field, uh, however you can do that. Tyler Wood, he was all around the field on Friday night against Woodland, uh, whether it was bringing pressure on br uh, blitzes, whether it was getting to the ball carrier, you know, doing everything on defense. Uh, Tim Shea from Woodland recognized that and praised him after the game like like none other. Um, so Wood is the most important player on that Ansonia defense. Uh, look for him to be big in the middle of that defense, whether it's dropping into coverage, whether it's bringing pressure on Krieger, keeping him uh, from scrambling, whatever it may be, Wood's going to be involved pretty heavily you would think. And then Tyler Lester, whether it's uh, both sides of the ball, uh, he spelled Newsom pretty well in that last Friday night game. Uh, managed about 50 yards rushing, uh, gives Newsom a rest. Um, and on defense, a pretty skilled defensive back. And uh, that secondary is going to be tested, we would think, for the first time this season against the Raiders. So uh, Newsom, Lester, the rest of those DBs, are going to be going to have their hands full, and we'll see uh, how they can stay with these Derby uh, receivers. For the Raiders, Ray Krieger, I mean, goes without mentioning, he's the man. Whether it's running, uh, passing, you know, spreading it around the field, uh, he's the big one. And then you look at the receivers for Derby: Dylan McMahon, Tim Adante, Brian Dobeck. Those are the three big ones. Uh, how can uh, they get some space here in this Ansonia secondary. Um, Adante's a big target, McMahon is quick and shifty, and Dobek is just that guy that's going to go over the middle and get his yardage. Um, those three working uh, together uh, will be important. Um, you know, Get open, let Krieger find you, you're going to have to make sure you keep the ball, get your yardage, um, because I think that the only way Derby's going to be able to win this game is if they just outscore Ansonia. Now, that sounds obvious, but I think Ansonia is much better equipped to win a 20 to 14 sort of game. Derby is more equipped to win a 42 to 35 side, uh, type of game. Um, so the higher the score goes, you'd have to figure the advantage swings at least a little bit to Derby. Um, whether it's not all in their favor, that's one thing, but their chances would seem to be higher if Creer and the passing game click, uh, you know, better early. And you know the keys to this game. How does Derby pick up any blitzes that come to Krieger? It'll be interesting to see what Ansonia uses uh, to pressure Krieger. Um, you know, to keep him in the pocket. You don't want him running out to the side of the field and getting 10, 15 yards a run. But um, you know, you certainly do want to make him feel it and not have all time, uh, all day, uh, to scramble and find his targets. Um, and the outside defense for Derby. Newsom is really good about getting out uh, to the tackles and either bouncing it off the tackle or bouncing it inside the tackle. He did both very well against Woodland. Um, you know that is going to be critical if if they let Newsom get outside. It's going to be a long night for the Raiders, I think. Um, special teams, you don't want to kick the ball. 
to Newsom. Woodland made that mistake a couple times, and they were hurt on it. Um, so if you're going to punt the ball, if you're Derby, you're, uh, don't kick it to Newsom. Kick it out of bounds. I don't care what you do. Don't let him get a running start like that. Uh, and Sonia, the defensive backs, like I said, the first time they're going to be tested all season. Um, you know, see what they can do out here. Wisdom would tell us that they're probably going to be okay. There's some athletic kids in the defensive backfield, and if they get some help from the front seven with pressure, uh, they should probably be okay. Um, Naugaduk did a good job by switching up their different looks, whether it was pressure, whether it was dropping five, six in coverage. They did a nice job, and Plasky acknowledged that after the game, that they had to switch things up and not let Krieger settle in. Uh, so I think Ansonia will be smart enough to do the same. And then if you're Ansonia, pound away, you know, whether it's Newsom, whether it's bringing Lester in off the Wildcat, you know, just pound that ball. Um, the more you have the ball on the field, it's obviously the less that Krieger does. Um, I think the same would sort of go with Derby. They want to keep Newsom off the field. Um, you know, so that ball control that we talk about a lot here could be big in this one. Uh, so our picks, like I said in our Monday videos, both Remy and I have the same picks uh, in all of the games this week. And we both got the Chargers. Um, it, it's going to be fairly major upset, I think, if Ansoni goes down, especially with the defense they've shown in the last couple of weeks. I'd get Ansoni a 42-14. to Remy's got him 46-20. to So... Um, you know, we both expect the Chargers. I know at least from here forward, I expect the Chargers to run the table in the league, and I think uh, <coughs> I think Remy pretty much the same. So that's our one game of the week, Friday at seven. We know a lot of you'll be there, so make sure you're uh, tweeting your scores at us so we can keep track of them on the scoreboard. The other big one, which will, I'm sure a lot of other people will be at, Torrington is one and a one and one. They will head to Municipal Stadium to take on Holy Cross two and zero. Oh. And this is a game we pegged before the season as probably a pretty critical game in this Copper Division. Both uh, are in that upper echelon along with uh, Naugatuck and Woodland, the four teams that are really going to be challenging for this title throughout the season. And here's our first big domino to fall in the Copper Division. Uh, big players in this one. Brendan Litton, obviously, a career-high 427 yards, six touchdowns. But maybe the more interesting thing is that he threw a touchdown uh, last week. Uh, against Wolcott. So maybe that's sort of a wrinkle in the offense uh, that Torrington will install as maybe not a more regular thing, but something that Holy Cross might have to keep in its mind or, uh, you know, an alternative certainly to Jason Abbott throwing uh, the ball around. Jared Williams also ran for 100 yards last week, and uh, you know, he can do a few more things in Lytton, you know, whether it's moving out into a slot or uh, just running straight from the backfield, but a nice little spell to Lytton. And then you look at Dan Chabelle, the linebacker. Um, with those two other players on defense, uh, Chabelle is going to be uh, important on in the linebacking core. Um, you know, Dave DeGiorgi is an effective runner. We'll get him uh, to him in just a second. You've got playmakers like Isaiah Wright. Again, we'll mention him. Uh, but Chabelle, you know, moving around the field, trying to limit uh, what a, uh, Holy Cross can do on offense, um, and you know, getting the ball back to Brendan Litton as quickly as possible. Um, for Holy Cross, a team that scored 20, 42 points a week ago, so their offense seems to be coming around a little bit, uh, at least better than it did in week one. Um, you look for Dave DeGiorgi and Isaiah Wright, the senior and the freshman. Uh, DeGiorgi will pound that ball at you. Wright can get the ball in a, a variety of situations, whether it's outside, um, whether it's on a reverse, you know, whatever it may be. He's an athletic kid. Um, didn't get a ton of touches last week. Um, but I think that's something that the Crusaders certainly want to work on going forward is getting him the ball uh, more often. And then Anthony Gemelli on defense. Uh, he and DeGiorgi are two of the big playmakers on this Holy Cross defense. Gemelli had a phenomenal game against Crosby in week one. And if the Crusaders are going to be effective in stopping Brendan Litton in this Torrington running game, uh, both those guys, DeGiorgi and Gemelli, are going to be very, very important uh, in this game. Um, keys in this one, Torrington. You know, pound the ball away. Um, you know, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just, you just pound it away. If you don't get successful on, on the first series, the second series, you know, Brendan Litton is your bread and butter. We're everyone knows that. Um, you know, so just ride him the whole way. And now you've maybe got a new wrinkle to use with him uh, with a pass. Um, uh, could be interesting. We saw a couple running back passes. You know, Jake Uris and and now we see Brendan Litton. So. Adds another dimension to him. And special teams defense. Uh, Holy Cross has run a kickoff back for a touchdown in each of his first two games, and both 
of those kickoff returns really swayed the momentum in the Crusaders' favor in uh, a game that certainly um, could have gone either way at those points. Uh, so, so you definitely want to watch out uh, for that if you're the Raiders. For the Crusaders, a balanced offense. They wanted to get Zach Brown going at quarterback. He's a pretty effective runner when they get him going, but they want to get his uh, his arm under control. He's got a rocket. He's probably got the strongest arm in the league. Uh, he and Krieger uh, would go back and forth on that one, but one of the two strongest arms in the league at least. Uh, so if they can ever get him going against uh, Torrington uh, defensive backfield that we really don't know what they have, uh, but Wolkett had some success on them uh, last week. That could be something if they balance it out, but you don't want to get too far away from the running game of DeGeorgie. Um, and then the linebackers, as I mentioned, Jamelli and DeGeorgie, you know, getting around that second level, you don't let Litton back there. He can bust out those long runs. He had three really uh, long plays last week, and he said after the game he wanted, he thought he could have broken out more. So uh, they're going to be big. You know, once you hit Litton, you got to take him down. Uh, he's a powerful runner, and uh, Holy Cross going to need to seize its opportunities there. So picks on this one, we have both got Torrington in this game. I've got him 35-28 in what I think will probably be the best game of the week. Uh, Torrington also picked by Remy, 38-28 in that game. So those are our two games of the week. Um, we don't really like riding the fence uh, this much, but uh, when you've got two great games in both divisions, uh, you've got to we've got to highlight them both. So. Uh, and I can't promise we won't do it again the rest of the season. So, uh, Once again, we appreciate you guys joining us here on the blog. Uh, we will have our live scoreboard up on Friday, so uh, we will have tweets from everyone covering these games, and if you're at a game, uh, tweet at us, either at NVL Football, at Kyle Running one um, and we will retweet you into our scoreboard. Uh, we really appreciate everyone uh, who does tweet during these games, and uh, I think we've got a pretty good thing going on with that. So uh, once again, appreciate you guys uh, stopping us at games and, and chatting us up. We're always more than welcome to talk with you guys. We always love you guys visiting here, whether you comment, whether you just read, uh, whatever it is. Always appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys coming back. So enjoy week three. We will be back uh, next Monday to talk about what happened and look ahead even more. But uh, should be another pretty exciting week of games. So keep visiting the blog, tweet at us, follow us, whatever you got to do. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Take care.